Hello, welcome to book two. So, as you can imagine, I am creating the rest of these um, analytical videos with the rest of the books. Uh, you know, some people are like, oh, if you draw more of it, um, you can have, you know, more afterwards. But uh, I just still want to, you know, analyse all the books regardless because, you know, it just keeps the books all equal in detention. For those who are first watching it, that's a funny introduction, I'm sorry. Uh, I definitely would recommend you to watch um, book one first before going on to this um, book two. Uh, so, yeah, the first uh, official sequel, and here's. Um, the poster design. Uh, to be honest, I think this is one of my lesser favourites. I try to, you know, this is meant to be Ozona's castle, uh, the flooring and walls. I don't think much with what it looks like in the end. And here you have the lightning grip shapes, the Allegiant members, and as you can see, you have a new one. And you're like, oh, okay, I wonder who this character will be. And interesting history lesson. So if you remember in book one, when I had a you know, a character who had limb abilities who was then kicked out of the team, he used to be like a powerful figure. I used to have great stories when him and his owner were like the good guy and the bad guy of their own universe. And, you know, they could have potentially mixed with the, the Legion. But, yeah, it's just I was a young kid, like, generating those ideas on a whim. But because I'm more aware about storytelling nowadays, um, yeah, uh, it could be like an idea for the future, maybe, something that can help. But regardless, I'm just happy with expanding this... Um, the universe. I can always merge them, we'll wait and see, but regardless he is, Ozone is definitely another character who I've not only imagined, um, like, since I was young, but, you know, even his design, the way I pictured him, you know, it seems to always stay the same. Um, but uh, anyway, so, yep, scheme of Ozona, uh, what is this scheme, who is Ozona? Let's go and find out, shall we? Alright, so, uh, first things first, um, there was definitely more to this land, um, before the Patone Sally covered it. So, yeah, not only I think a roof part is missing here, but you know, this could do a bit more of a window. I would have liked to see more of the land because it was like a bridge connecting to the president's house here. And um, yeah, I, I, maybe in you know, like other videos I could show what more aspects look like, and this is definitely the case here because I did kind of like the setting, it's kind of been made redundant with the tone here. Um, you know, and I believe I have tried to carry on the design of the patrol panel, if not, then apologies. Um, I've tried to be as consistent as possible with the design. The colours are definitely made sure to carry on but so on to the story so um yep so the president's apparently in trouble but yeah there's no visual threat alongside the text on the following page indicating that i think it would have been nice to include a spaceship but oh well but uh, the main point of this scene is um you have the legion almost like separated again and as you can see in the writing they're talking about the history while they're making the way which uh yeah i guess a random topic we could say um uh, interpret it as you know, the president's been there for ages, and Nicole has probably been in the president for some time. Who knows? It'll be the most likely. Oh, well, no, they've met before. And, um, and if you're wondering about the timeline of these books, I definitely made them days, weeks, if not months apart. Uh, so I don't have like drastic changes. It's just, you know, just, just keeping the status quo from the previous book. And in this case, Lady and I'm more of a solid team that have probably been solving all sorts of crimes on. Just on Earth for now, the much to retain as a classified team, almost. As they used to be, but you know, just a lot more solid, a bit more independent, and a bit more trusted, you know, especially as the president seemed to like them in the end. Um, but yeah, so history, yeah, so the Dutch Steve chat they're having about, and yeah, it is kind of know what they're talking about. I guess that's parts of uh, their, them to history, even Arvin's, which could be instantly later. But the main point is that Nicole's not willing to share any of her past, which you'll find out later. So yeah, an interesting start to a brand new conflict. Uh, and the main theme of this story is not putting on a alter ego. You could say, oh, God, is it like one of those stereotypical, oh, you know, just like be yourself story. Um, as, yeah, even I don't like stories when they tend to tread on common themes without making it their own. Even songs have this problem as well. But in this case, so instead of being a oh, be about yourself kind of story, it's more like trying to put on a different ego during set scenarios and not needing to do that. Or at least, yeah, just don't, um, yeah, just always keep things open, which I guess, um, it's more of a Nicole thing, but you can see how this will be relevant to Kyle later. And so yeah, that's just like the kind of theme I want to hint at here. Uh, because the first book is just simply about, you know, teamwork is good while trying to make um, my own twist on it. But in this case, um, and another, yeah, you get the idea. Each book has each uh, theme of its own. Let's go. Okay, um, fun fact. Um, still trying to, hey, but I recently came up with the, the names of races, um, the names of the races in my books, sorry. Um, yeah, I've, you know, as I said in book one, there's a character guide which um, is, you know, will be linked in all of the video descriptions of all my videos on YouTube. And um, and while I have said in book one, there are other designs which I have 
uh, you know, made up before when I was little and I'm slapping them all, all over this book. Um, there are cases where I had to come up with new original ideas, although even this one was from a natural lot design, they were to have crab legs, but I wanted to make the robots a bit more familiar with a robot. And then you have these creatures who, I think I have said, have like tints of metal in their skin too, made them more interesting. And But yeah, I just carried over the crab leg thing. So the crab designs are previously created by myself, a younger self, uh, or, you know, a previous design of mine that has the interest like here, or had to be made up entirely. And I'll tell you what else is made up entirely, the world settings. I started a couple of ideas, um, yeah, that I made up on the spot, and I think I've kind of paid off with that. So this is the President's Building, you could say it's similar to the base, um, uh, I do hope it's different, because, <laughs> yeah, this is um, all my, like, jade greens, and, yeah, this is President's Desk and the window behind it, almost stereotypical of, um, the White House's main room or whatever, but I wanted to make this president a bit more cool and stand out in his own way. And you can definitely see him here compared to like the, the, video, the, the, the video versions of the books. And you can see that the president has been saved by these aliens, and considering because of the interpretation about the three older men knowing each other, um, the Eretron is here, that's his dead eye by the way. They've always been on the left side, that's always been the consistent trick of the Eretron. And you can see Mike has his revolver-inspired laser weapon, and I say laser weapon, because you, know, you want to make it a bit more kid-friendly. So yeah, the Legion have solved this problem, and they're kind of divided again, uh, which, as you can see, because of the conversation from earlier, that speed them to a bit off with um, Nicole. Or they could, you could say, like, they yeah, like they are still working together, you know, especially to take down these slot, or at least stop them on the tracks, but even then you can still see in there. Uh, sorry about that, I accidentally got to the following page. So what I was meant to say is, um, yeah, so the Legion are both together, but they're just slightly pinned it, uh, because of the conversation they had, which makes it a new challenge for them to overcome. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, the uh, yeah, Mike and Redron were there to help their mate, and considering it's the president, it'll definitely be more of a serious situation. And and I think it was also said um, in that last page as well that there's been footage released of the Legion, so now they're about to get publicly known, which also adds a new challenge considering they've been well hidden all this time. Anyway, they'll be expanded later on. Uh, but so now, so uh, there was a, a like in what all of these books that have their own interesting pages, which I've had to cut out. And um, in this case, sorry, I've just barely put my laser on just now. Um, so I had one interesting page of, it was like a court scene, or like uh, more like a meeting scene in the Dark Fortress, and you'd see sign for the main goons and future faces, which probably would have helped the establishment later on, but just all sorts of other goons as well. Could have been really interesting, but I think it would be too long and not to mention more. Well, it, it would have just added facts considering that um, Zion 4 is already needing an ally and Orphina is the perfect goon uh, for the job. And um, hopefully this is stated as well. Uh, but if you're wondering, you know, why it hasn't his own, uh, you know, helped the previous situation. So uh, I guess that's another interpretive thing as well. Uh, because if you have like a massive alliance, you want to keep them sorting out various problems. So for instance, if Orphan already had his own army, well there you go, he can potentially get hold of one energy source. And as owner here, he's overseeing multiple planets. He's quite a busy fellow himself, he's about to oversee another planet. And as you can see later on, he's uh, a character which, you know, has these massive chains linking his world to other worlds, potentially taking them out of their own orbit, which you can interpret to be possible because his owner has the power of air and particles on base. But as a future thing, this is Forza, which is, I know it sounds like Forza Horizon. Forza is a foreign word for air or wind. And um, so it's not just like airbending, it's um, it's any other like particle-ish kind of power. You know, there's lightning and, and you know, even um, thanks to, like to fill a gap on how Ozona travelled through space later and how Ozone 4 did it all around book 5, which you'll see later on, uh, so because, you know, Forza would have helped them move in space, so, yeah, it's just, so, yes, yeah, that's something I could have hinted. Uh, but, yeah, this is a scene I definitely imagined, imagined for this time, you know, sending Ekron, who, you know, he's kind of dividated by this old wise being, you know, he's a being who's, over, he's overseeing multiple planets, and he does it to reduce violence, but at the same time, he's being extremely restrictive of how these plants are ruled, so, yeah, he's not, um, he's not a nice fella. And it, it kind of is in line with, as you can see, what Zion is aiming to do. He Zion Four wants to decrease violence by getting rid of certain beings, or at least those who fight at least. But as Ozone is taking a more of a peaceful approach, um, it does take longer, you know, seeing multiple planets and diminishing free will at the same time. But you can see both Ozone and Zion Four are just totally immoral compared to the Legion, who just have a crime, just simply solve it. That's it. Almost just like the real world, you know, just we don't like diminish a certain group of people because. <laughs> 
of that, yeah, which is totally out of whack. And so, yeah, that's why, you know, you can see how Zion Ford, not his owners. You could, you could probably see where they come from, could do more history perhaps, but, you know, definitely never in many motivations. And once again, both, because Forza is represented as, is that the, yeah, that's the dark blue uh, element. And so you can see that colour scheme of his owners' world, other parts of the book, and even on himself. Okay, so, um, yeah, as the book says, uh, Public Bash Backlash for, you know, footage being released. And, um, you yeah, know, so instead of, so just to further explain, so uh, the public then you just found out that the base has been unleashed on this alien team to sort out these many problems. And these are, yeah, these would be more alien cases because, you know, they, they that, you know, design for more design for doings would have been kept away from the public eye. And so it's the public wondering, oh, no, with this alien team around the world, they'd be safe. You know, it, what, what will the concerns be? Are they truly friendly to us? You know, are they actually defending these alien beings from Earth? Like the video is presented in a way to make the a bit more fearsome in their nature without the context, which is definitely intentional considering later on. But because of that unsurety and fear from the public, that's made, you know, the Legion worry, you know, how, more, well, how will they be able to go on from this. And because, as, as you'll find out later, um, Zami has had a history of bullying as a pretend human. As a hint now, this is his arc for the story, you know, not to have this kind of facade, especially if he's trying to be more of a heroic figure. And so, as you can see later on, he's trying to power up more of his gadgets, trying to make himself more intimidating. And that seems to be more of a, cope, that's more of a persistent trait of his character, he seems to. And yeah, so Carly, you know, he seems to cope uh, with his problems by fixing his gadgets. We've seen that with um, you know, when he's bullied by the surfman in book one and finishing the awesome tone afterwards, and now he's trying to upgrade, upgrade his gadgets, like increase the lightning capacity, which is also relevant later. And to be honest, both could do with a bit more expansion, but you get the idea. And I tried to do like a circuit board uh, inside, which I think is a nice drawing detail for me personally. And not to mention, you get a hint on how Kyle's new. Oh, actually, no, if he needs well, probably morals he's probably had from the get go, but they're probably re emerged more so here. And it's made Ivan um, worried as well. Um, not the clearest facial expression, but he's an animal, could say that they're a bit more muted, but this is almost like a cartoon I could have done. More exaggerated facial expressions, considering animals and humans in cartoons don't have similar expressions anyway. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so um, uh, in the first book, Orphan was more very simplistic, really, and he's had his moments in between, while the Legion had their, more their one time. When it comes to early parts in book two, and I think other books have this book one or book two approach, but book two has <clears throat> sorry, this approach where you see what both the, the Legion and the villain are doing. Which um it just depends what your story is like, but I think it definitely works for because in the first book you definitely want to be more familiar with the Legion and understand that Orphean is bad. But in here the Legion have their screen time but you also see more what the villain is doing and Orphean no sorry, this is Ozona, the cloaked being yeah, with someone who has a bit more character to him, and and because of the way the plot is being built up, um, yeah, I think this back and forth approach is definitely needed here. And um, yeah, so just notice this um, the outlining here for the trees. Yeah, should have been as thin as these two. Apologies. Uh, but yeah, a couple of Easter eggs here. So Lingo once again being used, and um, so help off here. She is a Numian, a a race which I've already I've always conceptualised. Although I kind of done it recently, I've been a big fan of. Her, her race, um, they are very representative of any creature and you know the spirit of them and the part of living God is a spiritual version of certain beings but her race also uses it as an ability uh, to you know turn themselves into a second form and she is a, a, a heywan, uh, sorry made a word on the spot, which is a, a bigger wolverine wolf-like creature. They used to be burgundy or brown but you know made it blue and you know to keep with the colour scheme and you'll see more about Hairwolf later on, but for now she's um, Ozona's right hand lady. And she's meant to be like unsure about this anymore, but I know, yeah, this face doesn't really show that. If anything, it just looks like she's concentrating, or maybe it's a way to see, or to be like, hey, you know, I'm um, not so much into this like graphic stuff anymore, so you know, just like back off. And, and you can see that the cape um, helps her transform into this um, this Haywin creature to uh, scare off this creature. Um, so yeah, you could almost see it as, you know, she's not someone who's brutal, um, but she will um, use approaches to help diminish your fight. And you can end up see more of her traits later on. But this is a planet for these beings. This is another planet, well, one of the planets, which Arizona is overseeing. And 
uh, probably more detail, as I will say now, compared to the box, but this planet, um, because of the kind of creatures they are, they're a bit uh, mischievous, and so Ozona um, would have most likely sent Tailwolf to you know, sort out this mischief, you know, to diminish the violence, and that kind of backfires to <clears throat> Ozona later, but, you know, that, um, I'll explain more so later. But it's a planet of these creatures, and this is both two future characters for... Uh, aside of a couple of cameos later on in this book, they are more prominent in book three. And for those who read book three, you'll know who those two people are. But anyway, more on that later. And so after a whole heap of event-like um, pages, you know, once that are significantly, you know, taking the story up to the next steps. Uh, so as well as that um, uh, one of Carl earlier, you know, we'll have this um, page which just focuses on Nicole and her development. And, uh, you know, as you can read and tell, you know, Nicole's like, you know, I couldn't reveal my history earlier, shall I still do it? I might recommend not to. And I think as another book improvement, I think they could have done with uh, more on, you know, why, you know, what did what bad that did to Mike and why it did good for Nicole later on. Could be like, you know, really interesting mix subject to talk about, you know, about controversial um, backstories and stuff. And you know, and revealing that to the public could be a really interesting theme to go up upon. But I think, uh, I think sometimes, like when it comes to like a storybook format, like, you want to keep the theme nice and punchy, so you can just simply say, "Oh, you know, you find out what Nicole is hiding later," and Mike is just simply um, just saying, "You know, that I will recommend doing it." You want to maintain this positive image for the Legion, but on the other hand, it is making Nicole uh, have a go at the Legion again, which is, you know, a bit yeah. So that's where it can get nice and grey. So it's good for a story as small as this, but you know, if I'm creating an old version or if this book is to be better, I think that could have been an improvement. Uh, but anyway, you can see, you know, nice bit of their relationship here. You know, Mike has been training Nicole for ages, definitely have had some time together. Even my character guide kind of expands more the history of a lot of these characters, actually, whether they should have been in the, the books or not. Um, anyway, so, yeah, let's get going. Um, interesting fact, so earlier in book two, many two help them. Um, a, the structure, and there was also this idea that um, although that idea doesn't work later on because the book one does have the servicemen and Legion work together, meaning that everyone in the base and even the president his staff and stuff, they're aware of what the Legion is, but, just, but not the general public. But there was going to be this idea where the servicemen are like, oh, you know, the Legion, we've saw the footage, or you know, seem to be quite monstrous in your approach to stuff, and then that backfires where Pod, um, as you'll see later on, has this insecurity of being more filled because you know, they're creatures which, uh, well. People don't know, you know, how bad Morphils are, or under Mechador's rule anyway, but the unsurety of, um, you know, what he is, that's made the public both fearful and Pod kind of off about himself. And there was this one interesting scene I also had where Retron was to have a go at Pod, and Pod was like tempted to go at him, which almost, you know, hints that, you know, Pod is still kind of a monstrous creature, even though he's trying not to be, especially with his mind evolving, that you'll we'll see later in these books. Um, so yeah, I think they've uh, yeah, the serviceman idea with the Legion, definitely not, and funny enough, Retron breaks up the fight and Retron's going to have a go at the Legion, and Mike's like, hey, you know, back off, I've got um, something that'll keep the Legion away from you. And so, yeah, the Legion, no, yeah, the Legion serviceman clashing definitely no longer works, considering book one, and that's definitely an important storytelling thing. Don't, like, alter, don't, yeah, don't fix a structure in your book that's going to contradict previous events. In fact, in actuality, I guess you could say that the servicemen were known of the Legion, and then like, oh, you know, I didn't we didn't see this side to you, we're not so fond of it. Uh, that could have still worked, but you know, then this, I think book two has been the, the, the hardest one to shrink. And you'll see on the last page on how there has been loads of other events which kind of had to be shrunk together. But regardless, you have the status quo, you have an insight and incident, which is the release of the footage. And um, and then also we have the Legion having their new goal of, um, yeah, just a new goal for, like the first, uh, yeah, not so much of a midpoint goal, but this is more so for the, first act, you know, about Nicole coming along. So you could interpret that as like the inciting incident. Uh, I think that's one problem I personally have with this book. So you have this conflict with the Legion and the, new effect and the footage, but at the same time you have Ozona and Hailwolf coming in. And you can see how, because there's this idea I have for Ozona, that T2 is having his own ego, which he uses to hide himself and how it makes him monstrous, and how the Legion learn not to do that, especially with the with the Legion being presented in a different way in the media. So it links in that way. Well, I think that does puzzle the structure and the goals because book one is very good with stopping Orpheum, which is getting the energy for the first half of it. This one doesn't do that as well. And uh, yeah, I think that could have been done better. But in a regardless, she's leashed out of status quo and the book is about to move on and previous events do help set up this page and, and onwards. Uh, so a bit more positive. And not to mention we have the return of the 
Earth holograms, the design of Hellwolf, and I think this is the detail on the face is missing from the video version, I think. But at least just are the outline of what she looks like. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so she's gone to Earth, you find out, we'll find out why. Uh, but she's a new alien, she's infiltrated the Earth, and this is new, not the Legion. Okay, so uh, the Legion have entered this city. Um, I think I've given the city name, but regardless, it's seen more so later on. And this is pretty much the first time we see the public, because in book one, it can interpret it as just, you know, simply saving the world. And even, I've always planned for book one not to delve so much into the public saving part, especially, you know, the Legion had to be away from the public eye at this point, so you can see why, you know, the public might be more relevant now. But anyway, so we can see that, you know, Zambi's using the wrong side of himself, trying to be intimidating, he saw his former bully, you know, Nicole's trying to stop him, and they have a hint of Pod being like, oh no, they you know, see me, I more for, you know, they may not know the full context, but still like a foreign creature to them, which, you know, is put him on edge. Uh, no, Arvin, but he doesn't, like in book one, he doesn't, yeah, like, he's not a good character that needs to change, like, Dion is, almost, so, if anything, uh, as as you'll see later on, Arvin's the character that tries to keep the Legion together in some way, he almost bonds to team, and I think that helps Pod set up with the Legion, with Arvin being around. Um, but, um, yeah, the first drawings of Rose and built with Harry like this. Um, yeah, a bit funky, but you know, it has its own colour scheme, which definitely makes it uh, distinct. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say for this one. Let's go. So yeah, as I said in the writing, um, Carl has been bullied by all sorts, and he encountered one of his worst bullies, which he tried to go against, but by doing that, it's definitely added to, um, you know, the Legion, no, no, the public's negative view of the Legion, you know, by doing that, that's definitely made the Legion almost question themselves. Um, it, yeah, it's a yeah, it, low point is definitely far worse than this, but sometimes in the story you do get almost like a, a low point earlier on, you know, just to add turmoil and struggle, not turmoil, that might be the wrong word, but, you know, just a, a sense of struggle, you know, where the leader are struggling to be coping in this public view, or, you know, you know, being falsely presented, and that's, you know, quite challenging for more. And even Nicole considers, oh, you know, maybe she we just stick to staying inside or whatever, you know, almost like, give it up and then they have not like it gives them an extra boost i think that's you know this acts almost too much like a low point especially as card here no sorry not kyle is that me? he um you know he's, you know reveals more about you know why he acted this way so i think this could have been the low point material maybe um but yeah this uh this event is just meant to be you know even if it's a reflective scene of the scene which comes down and we think um after the event at the city just helps everything cause down and I think it just it's the Legion getting more of an idea of how, you know, the public view is affecting them and how why they need to continue that positive image and why Nicole needs to present herself um, well as well. Well as well, no, uh, present herself positively as well. <laughs> yes, that's the, the better way to say it. And once again, you have, uh, you know, different locations, they're definitely going to head in spot. And this is like a good view of these locations. Some of them are from my own photos. I don't know where this is from, but, you know, it's had a river that art and arced rather, and some loads of trees and bushes around, so yeah, it just definitely helps the lands, um, you know, more, to be more three-dimensional. Um, so yeah, I've already said the improvements, so whatever this is at, so yeah, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so after um, a tiny low point and a bit of struggle, they you know, eventually you know, go on and they complete um, uh, a goal in the first portion of the story. And so, Hellwolf, as you'll find out later on, so she has been Ozona's right-hand lady for quite some time, She's reluctant to do it, and she's just hoping to do anything to not only stay away from the zona, but to uh, stay away from her own race as well, which you'll find out later. And there was this because Pod's overall character is, you know, finding, you know, he, Pod is always keen for peace to be generated to reach a significant height. And, um, but yeah, while that's Pod having his own peace overall, a uh, hellwolf um, at this point simply wants, um, I think, um, I think she just wants normality. The reason I say think is, um, it's because, you know, she's trying to get away from everything but um but in the end she does reunite with a race and she can have her own normality by um you know reuniting with a race uh, which we know you forget that for various bits and bobs so yeah that's definitely the core of pale wolf and that's um peace overall is pod's core um so yeah they did used to be too similar but now they aren't thanks to what i explained <laughs> um yeah nice evolutionary power from um arvin here these rival pincers or plants um over for interpretation and um, yeah, it's squirted from Pod there, um, not the most blatant thing, but I've had this uh, really cool idea for Pod where, um, oh yeah, by the way, I think this is a different forest compared to um, 
in M book one. You know, you can definitely see that where the trees more together in the brown patches. Anyway, Pod So I've always had this really cool idea where, you know, like the common film trope where one character tries to scare another and after failing, the other character ends up being more intimidated. I've always had this idea where, like, whenever someone like grabs at Pod, Pod just like simply squirts in water because it, if, because it's a powerful hiss that whales do and so yeah you can make like creatures a bit more hesitant and i think that's what pod is trying to do here because it, he's more of a pacifistic figure he could say that a bit of wars happened and they have helped a little bit but you know they want this creature alive almost or oh, this um being and he could say yeah it's just something i thought about um actually no um it, uh, because of how lower headed nicole is and this probably is interpreted it again but you can imagine it happening so all of these alien attacks have been coming from simon Thor. And Hellwolf explains later on that, you know, she, this is not just Simon Thor, this is Ozona, this is what's happening. And you can imagine one of these alien beings also being confronted and saying that, um, I mean, this is Simon Thor, and have I been stopped or, uh, yeah, maybe they've been stopped, maybe killed by Simon Thor later on, who knows. Yeah, that's just a whole heap of another area. But what's also interesting is that these, like, she's not your everyday Simon Thor ally where, you know, they're just trying to attack. She's been on the run and the Legion had just managed to catch her up. And that seems to be a battling approach, which I've gone for with Hale Wolf. She's someone who tries to run from danger while find a ways to deter it. And while there's no visualising here, but later on she has the power to shoot like needles from her back, almost like quills. And so, yeah, she would probably would have done that. She'll probably protect the Legion significantly at a point where they would stop moving. I even had this jarring idea where Nick, uh, Hale Wolf managed to deter. Like, after the city situation, the Legion do find Hale Wolf. Then Hale Wolf like, attacks the ball and runs again. And then after chilling and nearly giving up, the Legion have a second try with Hell Wolf. Yep, definitely jarring, and so that's why it's just all kept simply from the city, the small reflection, and then Hell Wolf, so you can see how I attempted to be Art Nita. So, yeah, not that this is a perfect story anyway, but it's definitely made better thanks to uh, this reflection. And, um, yeah, I think that's what I have to say about this one. So, yeah, I've been trusting facial expression the position from Hell Wolf, you can see how she uses her second form when it's introduced, um, thanks to earlier, and even the black cloak helps connect the characters together. Or the character designs rather, sorry. <laughs> so as somewhat said earlier, so all of these um the Zebra Legion will, you know, always find a reason for why these attacks are happening. And you could say, well did they not ask Orphean? Well Dion uh, I think he yeah Dion did, you know, explain in book one that that, you know, Orphean is and his niche robots definitely needed to go considering how wise um Dion is. And only and speaking of which um, them two have seen each other for ages. Legion had their own old robs to sort out and Dion is just in just simply happy zooming all over the planet. That status quo will change, and um, okay, I'll just say you later. So, the Legion essentially become, you know, they've been able to help multiple planets later on. But, um, yeah, I don't know why they've, they might have done it earlier in some cases. Maybe it's amped up later in the third book where they become more like celebrity figures. And, and maybe, you know, no, the attacks on Earth have been too constant at a point where the Legion had to stay on Earth, hence why the Legion and Dion haven't seen each other. No interpretation thing. Anyway, so yeah, this is. Um, yeah, so the Legion trying to find out, okay, so what's your thing? Are you resigned for or not? And then she will explain that, you know, his owner has, um, you know, been tasked by Zion for that, you know, Earth has, you know, this Legion team. They took down Orphan and the Ninja Bots and, you know, could do assault on Earth, you know, sort out the Legion, diminish all of the uh, assaulting forces and make Earth another peaceful planet with a whole lot of free will, free will restricted. And so after knowing that, that's where they're like, okay, yeah, Orphan, uh, no, Ozona is definitely the next problem to sort out. And... And yeah, I think even these books have slightly more increased stakes over time. Even if there's a small diminish, you know, you go from Orphan attacking Earth to then, then you know, trying to just save the president alone. Um, yeah, so it does, although that's just more of a sequel thing, you know, it's just an individual part of the story which is meant to amp up over time. But regardless, it's going from saving Earth to then stopping a, another, you know, instead of stopping a fraction from getting Earth, it's getting, no, it's stopping a planet from getting another planet, which is definitely amped up. And oh yeah, if you're wondering about the president thing, um, yeah, apologies for missing details in the book, so I'll pop this in the normal version, which I previously mentioned. Um, so if anything, if Simon Four, you know, is trying to diminish the assaulting forces on any planet, you could say that, or, you know, if we get rid of the leader, it will lose the the direction, probably will cause a significant diminish, and then, yeah, so you can interpret it uh, a bit like that. Um, yeah, well, like I said, I think that could have done with it, you know, expanded the part. And even all of these individual goons designed for they're not just an extension design for they would have had their own motives as well and they are kind of explained in the character guide but i think i'd admit some mobs of it would definitely would have made these books better but while the novel version can do that these childlike storybooks um yeah they, they can't always have this much detail the reason i say childlike is because you know it's just like you're almost like a storybook um 
at bedtime. You know, they're often nice and simple. Uh, but even then, it doesn't mean that, you know, some improvements or extra wording and visualisation could have helped with certain events. Um, so you can see um, how the paragraph links with the visuals. You know, Bart's trying to be calm. Nicole was being aggressive, as she normally is. Arvin, who is a bit more optimistic. And, uh, yeah, there was, uh, in fact, um, Hellwolf used to be a character called Red Wolf. Um, in Red, still the wolf formation. He used to be mates with... Um, the former powerful legion member who's not in the book, um, almost like a right hand man. Uh, yeah, she's have a sword as well, but you know, why give her a sword in a in this form when she could use all the attacking energy with her other form? Not attacking energy, but you can see why the wolf form is her weapon. She does not need a sword to assist that. Um, so yeah, um, she has handcuffs as well. The chains are small but minimal, so you can see how she's restricted. And even the legion would have known how to control the situation as well. Um, but yeah, you can also see how uh, you know. Nicole, you know, going at her isn't, you know, very fond. Um, if anything, it could be the whole revealing history part that's um, made her a bit sceptical. And, you know, after being attacked, um, you know, this is a, another possible sign for Goon. Of course, you're going to be a little bit more aggressive. But I think because of Pod seeing uh, more of a difference in that, you know, she's someone who's been trying to run away. So that's why, um, yeah, um, yeah, Pod would try to be a bit more open if she's not so much, if Hailwolf's not so much of an aggressor here. Um, yeah, I, I think um, you can see how that works. You can see how Nicole's, you know, his historic details about her, you know, it's kind of gotten away and it's made her less kind compared to what she was, you know, about in the book three. Um, like book one, sorry. Um, yeah, so, it, oh yeah, hopefully it's not out of character. You just have to be careful to keep character traits evolving from step one because a drastic character change will definitely harm the investment in the audience. But yeah, I think from what I've explained here, I don't think it's out of character, but I think that's up for debate. Which you can either write in my survey or in the comment version of my Wix sites if you want to provide feedback. By the way, I'm not using the use your comment section because um, you know, if as children are watching these videos, I'm allowing them to with Wix, they can at least deter any bad language and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's why you can feedback here or on the survey, which isn't in the public eye either. So yeah, if, like I said, if you want to provide feedback, then yeah, there you go. Also, before we continue, uh, sorry, change of location again. Uh, so yeah, uh, you might have noticed that the colourful background is gone and it will be gone for the other video, sadly. I uh, couldn't recreate it due to uh, problems. Um, hang on. All right, I'm good again. <laughs> so anyway, so um, after Herwolf has um, got the Legion on board, that's where they start making their way. So at the moment, they're in, they're in the Atone, which you can make a guess because of the wall and the colour of the, the tone itself is mainly made up of this dark and blue. And so yeah, another speech bubble is used to explain bit, bits of Hellwolf's history. And yeah, so some just um, sort of information like how her race used to protect her uh, parts throughout the galaxy, mainly wildlife as said in my lore guide or character guide. It even says set bits and bolts about settings, but whatever. Um, so yeah, and you know um, how she tried to continue the tradition of saving the universe by training when the rest of the race uh, agreed not to you know, continue that because if they did, that puts a target on their back with Zyvor and stuff. But because of Nicole uh, continuing that tradition, uh, I probably have not answered on how this was found out. You could probably say it was Ekron with the spy missions, but that's my pet canon. It's possible, but <laughs> a bit of a stretch anyway. Um, so yeah, you can see by his own up, he sends his goons, this is how he takes over a planet. Brand new chain is launched and all of the defences get diminished. But uh, but instead of um, the whole... In fact, no, this planet would have been overseen, but um, as some trade with Freewell or even the likes of this race, that's where Nicole does offer herself, which does uh, please uh, his own earth, which probably would be... I think if they... Yeah, definitely not too many years, less than 10, I would say. And uh, yeah, you get a bit of a sense of uh, environment as well, which you do see two more times. Um, kind of inspired by North America with like the grasslands and the mountains and the massive lakes. Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, that part of the scene. Let's uh, get to the next one. All right, on to the next scene. And so um, this is where, and um, so one reason that Hellwolf is <clears throat> part of this mission is so she can act as a guide. And as I said on the top of this page, and um, yes, yeah, so they're about to enter underwater cove, and you can guess that if the atone can survive space, then it can also survive underwater as well. So to spot this 
splash part there. That has a thick line compared to the others. <laughs> oh well. Um, but yeah, I kind of like this um, shot. You know, shows it is going underwater. That's thanks to get using a lighter paint thingy to make it submerge, but without completely submerging the vehicle. I think it could have done with submerging this cove actually, but. Uh, never mind, at least it still communicates. And there's also in the page, you know, where Zemi shows more of his Jewish self that starts to appeal to Wolf. And if that interestingly enough, I found online there's a arc template. And um and the uh, and the main part of it is how a change is challenged at first and how the belief is dropped and then changed by the end of the story. But this is kind of, no, Zami gets in a taste on how his misconception that Having a bit alter ego is better, but Hellwolf is definitely proven otherwise to him. Um, and it would probably teach the others more than me as well. And so, yeah, Hellwolf, uh, she may be flawed, but she isn't the kind who properly arcs. Like, she has a minor change, but definitely not. As maybe, you know, it's always because I mean, Nicole and Pard having the main kind of arcs that represent the story. Uh, but anyway, yeah, let's get going. So, as you can see, this is where we do start to see more of Ozona's planet. At the moment, this is almost like the royal land, just um, with water nearby. And, you know, uh, we're about to enter a cove as well, which sounds interesting. About to see parts of Azona's castle and even a canyon later, which is probably my favourite part of Azona's planet. And uh, from this Morpho here, and as also said, um, I'm not sure if the name Morpho or the term has been used in book one, but uh, regardless, as you'll see later, you know, the Valus here is a Morpho himself. And if you remember from book one, thanks to making him a, a humanoid killer whale, that's helped change the tide of pod and mecha jaw and the entire race's term of character design. It's just kind of crazy how history kind of works that way. But anyway, uh, so you get more of a sense of his owner's power. So um, I'm not sure if it's mentioned just born, I do hope so. But um, Hellwolf, um, although I think any wise master or leader would, would like reveal what kind of abilities they have to a right-hand person, which you're, which you're almost treating like dirt. So I can't imagine showing secrets like, oh, uh, because here, Ozona is sensing atmospheric activity because of how much he knows um, about Forza, and um, and as said later, Forza is embedded in the sword. Yeah, he is a alien of some sort. Um, the character guide will expand on it, but I think he does have the most history behind him compared to the other villains and their history. Um, so yeah, so that's simply the next. Uh, so yeah, that's just simply that part of the scene. And I guess what it also shows is that just because, you know, the heroes have entered the villain's territory, the villains are somewhere where he has his first backup and he seems like more than prepared. And as a small wiggle, you can see with his facial expressions, he's definitely curious as well. And I do like his pointy chin as well and his more angular hands. It makes him a bit more alien and human and yeah, definitely more mysterious figure as well. And I guess one more thing, uh, a bit of an interesting pattern with all of my villains is that they all do, that most of them seem to be big or muscular, uh, but here he's, he's more of a more human side, but he's definitely more formidable. And, you know, if they all are powerful, yeah, I, th I thought about, you know, Zyphal's definitely the most powerful, but you know, it's interesting to find out which one's more powerful. There's actually a calculation you can perform, which you can find on YouTube, you know, like a power up calculating, calculation, <laughs> but people I don't know with Marvel and DC characters, but anyway, yeah, let's move on. Yeah, so apologies once again for the filler. This is, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's about halfway, there's already 50 minutes, so yeah, I'll apologize once again. Uh, but anyway, so if you remember the planet evading with Hell, well, not so much invading, but you know, Hell will be in sense to sort out the situation, and you have a character who will play a large role in the third book, you know, trying to go against his owner. So, like Sign for a Book One, even as owner is having his own um, infiltrators. And um, there was even a prior draft of this page where um, his buddy, Mamikyu, he was, you know, the one to calm down this fight and take him back to the their planet and suppose in like um, accepts that and and I, I guess just to drop over spoiler in the following book um, of book three, MQ turns out to be Thorid who's actually a bad guy of his own, like he's a one man army, he's not really connected to uh, Zion Thor, although Actually, no, I think that, yeah, if he's not connected to Zion 4, then Ozona wouldn't be aware either. But I think someone like Ozona, for, you know, someone who's trying to be peaceful and diminish the fight against Ozona, then I think, yeah, it would have been nice to see actually in this page. Um, because otherwise, it just looks like a person's just giving up this fight, which isn't really part of his character, because Ozo, no, a person he loves fighting more than any other character. So you could just assume that maybe Ozona pushed him away from the planet, but why didn't he die? Um, God, sorry, I'm creating my own questions. Um, but, you know, you could just see that. You know, Zona has resistance sometimes. It's it could even be a sign that Zona is losing, you know, control of his world. Or you know, like, like in the end of book two, all the Zion Four's um, allies start to get more challenged thanks to the Legion inspiring many across the galaxy. 
So yeah, I think those bits work, but in the plus sense, yeah, I can see how this can be a bit misleading and confusing. Uh, I do like the bridge here, by the way. I think it's just a nice, neat detail to the land. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's move on. Alright, so we meet the Tengas, although I said before going to that, uh, this is what a star seems to look like. Um, yeah, just many a blue object, definitely something you can make out of metal. Uh, wood in the area, I guess, and this is like a flammable type of rock, I'm not sure. I'll have to put that on the wall guide as I update it. And also like the explosions in book one, even fire is blue as well. And I guess no spoiler, um, so Pod's uh, Pod Trident power, that's Vibra, which is one of the, another eternal element made out of water, fire and ice. And yeah, it's a light blue, a lighter blue representative. So that didn't make any sense. But yeah, light blue, yeah, definitely ties with uh, the power of Vibra. And that's almost like the key I've tried to do, you know, like, like lime green is liver god based abilities, the jade green is the cube abilities, and you have dark blue, which is the, uh, yeah, it's like the air based abilities. So that's another colour scheme I've tried to carry through as well. <clears throat> so the tengers, uh, I did used to make them like a variety of sea creatures, but I didn't initially just make them into humanoids, crabs instead. And if you look on my Instagram, there's a character I've made called Crushed. He's a massive crab, tiny crab legs on his body, massive fat legs, um, you know, the pincers. Definitely looks like an average crab, and the red and the yellow definitely makes him look nice. But not only did I, did I have time with the amount of detail, but, you know, we did have to go, for, well, I did have to go for other colours for him. Um, but, yeah, I did quite like, like the shot, you know, it just shows how another race is being curious of them. And later on, they're a bit more appreciative um, when they're helped later. And... Um, there was uh, an extra scene where the Tengas originally tied them all up. They were like, oh, okay, actually, the good guys, that's going to help us. Okay, we'll set you free. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I think that is fat to be cut. And you can just see that, you know, the Legion, uh, you know, the, the Atone definitely could have done with, like, visual damage if it did crash, as the book said so. Um, but, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, after the Legion possibly revealing who they are, the Tengas were like, yeah, we can help with the Atone. But as you can see there, that's where Pod was kind of foil this after getting a bit defensive of his trident. You know, if he was defensive of Arvin in, in book one, then yeah, I can see why he is like that there. And not to mention, so book two does try and answer this at the end, but as the end of book two explains, um, there's a significant event where Vibra was taken to the Tengas by Dion, and the Tengas managed to form the trident with the Vibra embodied. Uh, I think that I have explained in the law guide on how that's physically possible. I think it's another type of material not nitro because that doesn't always absorb but um um but yeah like they initially created it and to avoid you know the dogs in the back or possibly to keep themselves hidden in this world where there's owner feels like he owns the entire terrain at the top but the four letter tangers not many of them and they're just all even live, living down in the cove because as also explained later there's owner covered this entire planet in a type of concrete with the upper the ozone cubes um so yeah the tangers did throw the thing away um maybe down moved it maybe they yeah, I think that's the only explanation because they didn't have the access of technology. Yeah, not with one star anyway. Um, but yeah, they did end up with Pod on Earth as Pod, you know, landed on Earth not long before you know, the third one of the first aliens to enter Earth. Um, so yeah, sorry, <laughs> a bit of a pity lesson. Um, so yeah, let's um, get going. Although I think before we go, um, I've been to like caverns and stuff, tried to create um, a cave-like area, and yeah, I quite like the setting as well. All right, so now we get more of a in-depth look on how Arizona takes over a planet. You could argue that you saw that with Hale Wolf, but I think that's slightly different because you know Hale Wolf was you know made the made the planet targeted and she traded herself in. But with here, it definitely shows how Arizona you know shoots their train down or the entire army goes all around making sure the entirety of its world's defenses are out. And um, and so yeah, um, yeah and you also. I can't really say. Well, actually, no. It just shows how often Ozone may do it. Um, you know, Hell's planet, or maybe a Pastnos's world. They're probably in the later parts of them um, rolled over. And as you can, see, well, as you'll see later, Ozone managed to get out of a whole bunch of worlds, which he managed to oversee. So, I guess another part about him is that he's um, um, someone who knows how to oversee many planets. Um, yeah, definitely been interested in um, in a kind of villain. And um, sorry. Um, but yeah, I really like this shot as well. This was, uh, I've been on a, I think this is a France place I've been to. Yeah, and I've um, here with pools, entire coastline and rocks and different layers of land. This was one of my photos, which I then draw on top of. And you can see these creatures are like snakes, but they have arms and a lot of the other wear jumpers. Um, so yeah, and the jade green almost is reminiscent of 
uh, the cube element as well, which I think is quite an interesting detail. And also, uh, when looking at all of these uh, scenes from afar and within a collection, um, I think this book sticks with the colour of the element the best. Like, a lot of it is blue, and even Book 3 does that um, really well with um, the colours of jade green. Because, yeah, the others don't tend to stick with the elements as colour as much. And especially the fifth one, where it's representing all of the elements. Like, there's almost... Uh, like a fifth colour which represents the whole elements which is a very it's like a Shrek skin colour like a mix between green and yellow that's almost been the overall colour but yeah even then uh, I could have made it that bit more present or you know just made that kind of improvement overall and um, yeah I guess one more detail before I go uh, some of the actual, actual only texture that exists in the book I kind of wish I improved that as well uh, yeah sand over there and also these lines represent owners, his owner's power working the levitates on a piece of debris and that's how he gets around and because he's quite old as well which um uh probably pinted a couple of times but um anyway yeah, let's get going so yeah you're about to see uh the, the first small film for like the original small film because as i said explain later on my door and pod are their own different kind and even pod like has made his own kind of more films at the end of book five but yeah, this is meant to be a ledge i uh, could have made that better and um, <clears throat> the Tengas are trapped in the ice, so uh, that could have been better as well. Uh, another level of Nushinu power with Arvin, that's kind of nice. And um, and as I explained later on, um, if I, although Pearl, you know, she, one of her arms isn't fully grown, at least she does have four, four full legs in her second form, and she is hurt, which does carry over to real life as, no, her other form. It carries over to her other form, sorry. And you'll see later about how... Sorry, how Nicole aids Pearlwolf, which um, it's almost like a nice parallel because in book one she aids him herself because of, um, you know, um, how almost like selfish she is. But in this, and but then, even though she is putting on um, in a minor facade of her own, she definitely has that care for others, and um, and I think she is starting to bond better with Pearlwolf. Um, earlier would have helped um, her consistent truth, and you know she's help against Valus, who he probably would she would probably explain um, earlier on that you know Ozone has his own morphil, which um, he has. And um, it, yeah, so yeah, I think it, it definitely shows how much um, how far Pearlwolf has gone, you know, being a natural member. And another beast drag, so this is almost foreshadowing in book four, uh, that, um, um, you know, the Trident, and well, the elements themselves, they have it's made of a power which is so powerful it's hard to consume without uh, killing itself and so part of me it was able to handle that but why didn't balance like his hand is almost frozen uh, could have been done better by the way if i myself um uh, so yeah um you know i guess those are the any easter eggs and i say later on balance did have to go which definitely disappoints pod because he's trying to he's eager to stop the more fills his conflict and mainly kill uh, mecha jaw and to make Valor stand out, he has his own clothes, and I do like the bit and parts of him. It looks like he's been dunked somewhere, and um, I think the character guide will definitely fill this detail. The reason I said this is because I was thinking, did I write Valor in the character guide? I'm not sure, uh, but you it, it, it can make uh, guesses like, you know, he's probably broken um, three of his animis, animalistic cycle uh, or psychology like Pod has, but instead of, while well, Pod, you know, managed to find some peace in itself on Earth, thankfully, Valor did not. And so, you know, it looks like he's taking him onto another path, you know, with a much, no, sorry, a much like rougher lifestyle, you know, trying to do the work for Bozona. You know, having Phallus and then Hailwolf, it just goes to show that Bozona looks like he's trying to gain allies of his own, but he still has a massive army and he's still a powerful figure himself and quite old in his age as well. Massive longevity, you could say. Uh, but yeah, well, it was Nicole, maybe that will get rid of um, Valus. Um, I would imagine it's more of a team effort as well. I mean, maybe Zami helped as well. He's here, he is a powerful figure as well. So they managed to both sort out Valus because more fills are powerful creatures. Uh, almost have the, not the strength of the Hulk, that's a bit too far, but it's definitely similar. And that's the case with Zion 4 as well. But Zion 4 is still, still has the most powerful kind of body physiology. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I guess you could say that the clothes are only made for Valus as well. Maybe, you know, uh, I think that's almost, almost up for interpretation because no one else, no other more feel wears clothes like this. Anyway, yeah, let's go. As mentioned later, um, her, her, <clears throat> Nicole heals Hailwolf. And uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a weird size. I think unless Hailwolf is taller, but she's always been like similar size. So yeah, apologies for me. And uh, yeah, the Tengas, you know, they're seen that the leader and are worth trusting. The more curious and, and uh would you be more curious or you know just you know a lot more intimate could say you know after helping defend them and i think there is definitely more than this number and we have pride pages as well a bit like a few more but yeah i think that's just i think i've got for interpretation and yeah and oh 
bit of white that shouldn't have filled in. Anyway, uh, so yeah, because he wanted disappointed that another Morphal has suffered, Carl is trying to probably provide him some comfort, which, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice moment between them two, but it does lead Bod into another decision, especially with the, how nice the Tengus are. Um, so yeah, this is the last we see of the Tengus for now, so yeah, let's move on. Okay, so um, yeah, after Ozone managed to, well, Ozone Earth rather, so I can't be, I don't want to call him Ozone, because, you know, that's the type of layer around our Earth. <laughs> um, so Ozone Earth, that's his name. He used to be called um, Octavid Zone or something, a much more choppier name, but, you know, Ozone are definitely works as an, an intimidating name. And also, yeah, I think Xylophil's head is too big, considering that his body's meant to be a bit more broader, but, uh, well, at least it's all going to recognise him. <clears throat> And I say, like, another thing, you know, he's, he's more like a lizard creature, uh, but he used to have, like, a human body. He was too similar to uh, Thanos, actually. So that's why he's, you know, looks, uh, you know, definitely a more different approach. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> losing ability to speak. Uh, so, yeah, this is outside the Dark Fortress, so, yeah, you can definitely see how it's grey on the inside. This is, like, the land, and, you know, what the exterior looks like, you know, definitely expands on... I can't say that's significant world building, but at least that, yeah, this is this part of um, Zyphor's location. And it also shows that there is a land around the castle as well, even if it's a massive heap of land that's going all around on the space, which is, you know, the lower parts of space. Um, you know, if you go exit Earth downwards, that's what under space is in my world or universe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as the book says, um, you know, his owner won't uh, lend his power to Zion for because if he does, Zion could lose it, which would make his owner disappointed. And he will only offer it if Zion has the rest, which is a neat deal. And, and I guess it shows that despite being bodies and have similar. Uh, ideas, their approaches for diminishing violence is different and um, and you know they seem to want power in some way, you know Ozone is just happy with this one power he has, he knows how to use it well and Zyphor wants a lot so yeah, some couple of disagreements which definitely makes it almost like one of my favourite Venom Dynamics um, I just little segment, <laughs> I think I might interpret it most of it but anyway, um, yeah let's uh, make our move as we move on as you can see Zyphor is definitely a recurring villain and that definitely helps build him up you know like the mystery and the power levels and what kind of views he has yeah definitely makes the fifth book a bit more exciting um anyway so my favorite setting of um Arizona's planet a canyon chase and um yes as i may have explained this before but um yeah i've written scripts uh, six episodes each season or each book in this case and and does uh, yeah there's a whole heap of ideas which were there before and i always wanted to do canyon chase involving the book and the tone i think that'll be really cool and and yeah, you can see a bit pain off. They've been chased by uh, the flying serpents as well. And in fact, as you can see, they're actually somewhat inspired by uh, what's it called? Oh goodness, um, one of my latest animations, a hootus. That's it. Um, yeah, this serp designed the serpent creature. Uh, I did give him a name, Serpa, I think. Uh, but yeah, so they can fly, which is kind of cool. Yeah, without the needle wings and. Oh, and also, um, there was a deleted scene or page, you could say, where these things can enable space travel because of the airlight powers, hence why the Hairwolf made it to Earth. But I think that should have stayed in, or at least a line could help with that. Goodness gracious me, I'm going to like look back on this video and make like a whole heap of fixes to this book. I would have to add like a couple of pages to my book. Um, but yeah, I know, I know, like book one or two sounds pretty enough at the minute. But you, know, you can see is that this is just a simple story with any of you fixes and I hope you can still appreciate the story and the imagination I have because this like even though it has problems and you can see how I'm almost like fixing these problems because those are ideas I've had before but they're not executed or fully presented in these books. Um but yeah like I said they can be improved that's what's really good about this format. And you know I've planned to be years for this um, story as well so uh, I can see for like a minor payoff, you know I've had a good few views already um some feedback from acquaintances as well which is Nice as well. Anyway, back to the story. So, yeah, this is um, get to the uh, is this the midpoint. Uh, I would say so. Uh, a later midpoint that's allowed in the story. Um, <clears throat> and uh, or is it? Um, no, I would say the. Oh God. Um, oh no. Does this book story not have a midpoint? At least it has turning into other parts. But uh, and you can distinguish back one, two, and three. But the yeah, midpoint. So you may. Uh, but anyway, so Pod um, has this idea that uh, the Tengus are, you know, the kind of audience Pod needs, not the humans, considering what happened down at the city. So for Pod wanting to stay here, and, you know, that's where he can find a sense of peace as well, as shown later on. Because even in book four, um, my favourite one, by the way, 
Uh, there's an instance where he was willing to fight off an entire race to have a planet to himself because there's no way of getting out of the planet he, he was stuck on, a planet, you'll see that later, and yeah, he was willing to overtake it and, you know, just have a peaceful life there because, you know, I guess another spoiler, he tries to fight to make a duel, he fails, and, you know, with no trident as well. He may still have white elemental powers to him, but that's what he can use to fight off the Varanics, which try and eat him. And, um, and yeah, so, sorry, that was almost, <laughs> I can't take part of a page, but, uh, yeah, you can, it's a, uh, with what Pod has intended before and later, you can see why he wouldn't make a decision like this. And he almost sort of plays off later on in this book as well. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's uh, get going. And here we have our first appearance of uh, Dion. His role varies in <clears throat> all these books, and I think this is where he has probably the decent amount of screen time, or that could be book three. Uh, probably, I think definitely, oh, I don't know, is it, is it the smallest role? I'm not sure. Could be book five, I'm not sure. Anyway, so, yeah, as said, uh, with the niche box gone, that means more focus on Design Force goons. And even this fella here, he used to be a Legion member. Uh, after Spyco, the design in the second page of book five, he used to be a Legion member um, when planning the story, a speedster, and it was going to be him instead. Uh, but, you know, you know, it was just, it was just going back to shrinking the entire story. And, um, yeah, so it ended up being a cool, allowed to use a design for instead. Uh, the colour scheme could have been a bit more muted because it looks a bit too colourful, but I still like him. And he's, he's down grabbing him, by the way. That's not the most clearest. It looks like it's punching or pushing him. <laughs> not the best. Uh, or at least uh, maybe could be a surrendering part, but, oh dear, um, more interpretation. But you can see the message icons in his eyes, um, you know, Nicole has contacted him, uh, no, yeah, Nicole has contacted him, you know, saying, oh, you know, we might need your help in a bit if we ever, like, get stuck in a corner, because Legion are now planning to go through a nice quick route to get to Ozona the safest, especially between the canyon and the cove, but as you'll see later, Ozona is already keeping track of the Legion, and he probably would have, uh, you know, because there's a communication spell that exists um, in the story as well, Nicole uses it once in book four, uh, another interpretation? Well, wow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Valis does die. Although I think um, Ozona may already ask that when they when he sees Legion, or he may already guess that on how Valis doesn't go up the world when Ozona Ozona's world is getting flooded later and doesn't join the battle later. So yeah, Ozona could possibly infer that, or uh, or maybe he senses like uh, you know he can't sense movement that's overpowered. Well, like random movements like aircraft going through the atmosphere, but not individual movements. He's not Spider Man. You know, predicting movements and stuff. He's not the taskmaster either. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, that's a bit of a ramble. Um, so yeah, um, so this is a holiday picture of mine in Spain. Uh, so a variety of trees. I like these creatures as well, doozles. Uh, there's a yeah, I think a man's scrub is definitely a creature which is both an elephant with wings, a bit more colourful, uh, but in here I made them plain blue. And uh, yeah, these trees are almost like my palm trees in the flip flop animation. Um, yeah, I made it blue and green instead of yellow and blue. So yeah, definitely quite a nice touch. I think this is probably one of my favourite worlds. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, I would think we can get going, but one thing for sure is that Dion is now more involved in the story, and sometimes Dion's you know, quick introduction soon after he's getting involved. Uh, yeah, definitely a wise um, story decision. Okay, so uh, thanks to Ozone being a keep tabs on the Legion, um, that's where uh, the Atone is stopped at his tracks again. It's probably crashed, but less severe than the cove, considering it can fly later on. And Azona managed to, you know, threaten to get the location of Earth because, oh yeah, that was, uh, hopefully that was in, earlier on in this book. I know I'm not remembering details, but I don't know, I just had a busy set of weeks. <laughs> um, but um, I think I've said that too many times. The button, I am, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, Hellwolf was sent to try and find the location of Earth, and so. <clears throat> that would help Ozona locate where Earth is at. Uh, there is this idea that he has like a planet GPS and it can only work by adding coordinates. And um, because yeah, if the you know, if the Ozona goons can probably go from planet to planet, I'm sure they do like that similar role and probably report back to Ozone about so the planet's going to have to work. And so yeah, was meant to do that with Earth. Well, she she didn't, but now you know Ozona now has location. And even after you know promising a trade of life, um, yeah, he just up some more instead. He tricks them. And obviously he doesn't want the Legion alive, Design 4 would have passed the message to Ekron that <clears throat> you know, the Legion needs to get sorted. And yeah, this is one of Ozona's greatest um, abilities, and it would have been cut short thanks to Dion saving them, as you'll see later. Yeah, I said one improvement, I 
which that, that I was glad to apply so that I didn't have any button footage of these two. I had a load of cool ideas. So, you know, Zion, uh, no, Ozona was trying to do telekinesis and throw rubble at Dion, which does nothing, but then the electricity deters him, which you'll see later on. But yeah, this is another moment that you can see that Falza is used for, you know, defensive force fields. And um, hopefully I've kept the same colour above lasers throughout the story. Apologies if not, but you know, definitely matches with him. And even as, um, oh yeah, you probably would see that in my Instagram, the likes of Zami and Dion, they've had different names and different character designs. And yeah, and after Zami going for a grey skin, which Dion used to have to make Zami an alien instead of a human. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it's not the most robotic design, but from the machine guns and it's almost blank emotions, but yet again, that could be fit for all of the characters. Um, yeah, you can sum up see. Uh, he's a robot of some sort. I don't know. That's just another interpretation for you. But yeah, I do kind of like the scene as well because you know, Pod was already said you know I'd rather stay staying in this planet and after getting shot, yeah, the Legion have uh, a chance to escape and yeah, leaves Pod behind, which is not only foreshadowing of the events of Book Three and Four, but you know, trying to flood the area to defend them because it would have been chased by those own goons as well, and you know, Dion trying to stop um, those own as well. Um, uh, yeah, and you know, I think Dion is definitely a powerful figure enough to capture those owners' attention with the route instead of trying to keep tabs on what's happening on the right as well. Because you know, that's a lot of telekinetic power and just blinding power in general to take down Dion here. He's managed to go up against Orphean and God knows what. Sorry for saying that, by the way. Not meant to say that. Uh, yeah, not really. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that again. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry for the awkwardness. Um, so yeah, this is meant to be more of a forefront and uh, forefront land, sorry. Uh, yeah, it could be a bit more on the forefront, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all. Uh, let's get going. Uh, yeah, you can see the underwater effect again. And I guess something which you'll probably notice is, you know, uh, a pod being a orca, you know, the whole fighting strategic thing, that's cool. But what about swimming? And he does say here, um, and yeah, I guess like a tad little bit in, um, oh yeah, later on, once more in book two, and then once in book four against the Mechador fight. But yeah, I think I could have done with making him swim more. It, uh, yeah, I think there's definitely more opportunities. But I think having the power of water and ice, I think that's definitely matching with orcas in general with water and ice. If you're wondering about ice, you know, they go through the Arctic or Antarctic. And so yeah, I think definitely a good, uh, yeah, character design with, um, with a decent uh, meaning to it. I guess it's a bit questionable how you're also able to lift the um, on, but I suppose things can be lighter in the water and be just managers maybe. Or, oh, um, not in the book again, sorry. Dion can change his body weight considering that he is one of the strongest characters, as in physically strong. So maybe he's done that just before, or as he gets zapped just before he falls in the water, knowing that Pod could get him. <laughs> sorry, that's um, a load of convenience right there. Sorry, that should be all in the book as well. And has also said, um, as owner, due to his age, he's needing to rest. You know, he can't join the next invasion, unfortunately. So that's almost like him having a success, followed by a cost as well. So, yeah, but then getting that as kind of a neat touch, I would say. And, um, uh, yeah, all right, let's go. Yeah, I said, I guess I can also apologise for these massive jump cuts as well. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think uh, book three, no, book two was the hardest to condense. And we also get a couple of lines suggesting that, all thanks to his owner zapping um, Zami, it's made um, Zami's electricity powers more powerful. So instead of having to try and upgrade his gadgets with the lightning capability, now, you know, Zami's being able to be more powerful. But it ties with more about how you know he's learning not to be so egotistical which you probably would have seen with his owner her wolf would have most likely told him on the atone because you know her wolf would have told the legion a lot about him <clears throat> not just a history lesson but the abilities too um although i think that could have been said in the line as well um so yeah by, by lightning and they've just been yeah i think it's a tad convenient that because you know they not, none of the characters have proper armor and you know zami's definitely look you want um yeah i think they should have been down a bit more so you know why this big convenient and and this is retron to do this is just stunning and um because as we would see more of later retron is the kind to <clears throat> take advantage of any kind of success uh he can get hold of because you know he's he's haven't had his glory days in so long and now he wants them back and put him in the side will do that and um yeah, and uh, as Spock 2 later says, um, Retron's the one to release the footage to try and make the Lady Jin more menacing, and it helps him gain a bit of leverage again, uh, because he would have not been able to do so due to his permanent injuries, um, stopping him from 
never grasping that kind of successful battle. Uh, you could say, oh, but what about the next world battle? Uh, well, you know, there's Mike, who's, um, you know, a bit more about going and having this other team, which the president would appeal to. So, yeah, I think there's like a jealousy aspect to uh, Retron as well. Um, despite not many scenes of them, I actually really quite like Retron. He's almost not only one of my favourite villains, but almost one of my favourite characters. Um, yeah, yeah, I do quite like him. And I think that's the reason why I like Buck Fall the best, because he's in that one the most. He's almost like a driving force in that film. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's move on. So another deleted scene was uh, the goons being shown, well, seeing how they would start a new origin of the chain. And um, yeah, um, so you can already infer that um, in a family interpretation, but now we get how they, what the actual starting point looks like. And and I remember thinking, oh my God, are they going to go through a massive chain that will take like days to <laughs> go to another planet? But thanks to, um, although I think that's, no, I haven't really introduced them, a speed um, character. Uh, so I don't know if, uh, yeah, I can see Falls being like the speed boost kind of ability, considering air is quick and stuff, and, you know, tele being telekinetic with objects. Yeah, I can see that happening. So, and with Ozona having, you know, that grand knowledge of his own power, you know, being able to create a, a light speed tunnel almost to fast track anyone from planet to planet. And I think that could have been dropped to the line as well, because while the animals do have their common abilities, there are more, hang on, Sorry, I didn't want to be coughing down my laptop. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so while these elements have like the surface level um, kind of abilities, um, there are some abilities which take a lot more work and knowledge. And you would see that with the Titan, she's living goal to both heal and be able to resurrect um, extinct races thanks to samples. And so, uh, yeah, sorry, just going to my phone quickly. Uh, so yeah, I think, um, you know, that does answer book five how come you know Zyphor doesn't reach these powerful feats and, and while it could do a few more lines especially how you would definitely have unlocked those kind of abilities when having all of the elements and when fully connecting them all thanks to a mechanism uh, but yeah that's why he wouldn't be able to create light speed tunnels or self-heal himself <laughs> or even just create life you know Zy the titrants managed to create such life you know because service level living or and he creates like animalistic spirits which is as mentioned a service level ability um so, um, yeah, sorry, I just made myself a bit excited. You know, it's just a nice, simple, condensed law, and all of these character abilities come from these elements. I just find that so fascinating. I know it is me, you know, getting a bit fuzzy about my own creation, but you can see why it is, you know, nice and simple, and it's all connected um, in some way, despite the storytelling flaws. Um, so, yeah, this is the start of the battle. Ozone is still overseeing, despite not being able to join just yet, but, yeah, they're all ready for action. So yeah, like many other ideas, I always wanted um, the Legion to fight in the city, and thanks to seeing the city earlier, uh, there you go. And there have been a few instances where I have actually created my own settings using <clears throat> Autodesk Maya, and, and yeah, this was an example. You know, this is a 3D city which I drew upon, and that's why it looks nice and three-dimensional. Um, I think the atone could be... Uh, maybe the people could be smaller, I think. Yeah, I think that seems to be the case. Yeah, because, uh, oh yeah, as you can tell, the Atoni's back in wheels again. Uh, hopefully this should be in the book as well. Retron uh, damaged the flying parts of the Atone. It could bring up the question of why not blow up the entire vehicle, but I guess you wouldn't be, want to be seen as guilty. So for it to go back in wheels, it's almost like a callback to book one. So, yeah, I think that's quite a nice touch. And, oh yeah, funny mistake. Um, yeah, Mike's mouth and wrinkles, it's blown off his face. <laughs> that I didn't notice still later, so do, do apologise for those if you'll notice. And it's also nice for the Legion to work alongside the surface men. Um, it's probably something that would have happened between book one and two, probably something that happens before the events of book three as well. And I was about to say book five, but no, that's a former idea. I don't think, um, oh, I know they do exist in book five, but <clears throat> they're busy doing their own thing. And um, there was this structure where the servicemen were on their own and the Legion come, but as mentioned, it was booked to get in far too cramped. So, but you know, this is definitely a, a nice moment where you know all of their egos is nearly being put aside. Even Kyle, no, sorry, Zami is a more powerful figure with the lightning, and it, yeah, so it, yeah, it's just simply to stop this battle. Uh, I said they could be with more residents, we can probably see them in either inside or moved this inside or moved aside. Sorry, and you have the more, more quill shooting from Hellwolf. Uh, Nicole could do shooting lasers as well. And this is the only time Mike had a drone. Um, I think when it comes to, I do like making all my characters have some kind of ability because when you like watch the Dark Marvel film, you have the characters with superpowers and those who don't, which, not gonna lie, I don't always like that. And so with my series, I've, um, even the president has a couple of 
like you know tricks up his sleeve you know history of battling which still makes him cool and so instead of having like for just the experience and just the pistol he has the, a drone as well which sadly i wish i could implement more maybe other abilities um but yeah and and i say a bit of an advice um other than you know massively interpretable powers like you know the abilities of manipulating fire ice and water which pod can do as well as generate additional amounts as well from either three unless it's that yeah don't give your power not characters with too many powers even if you have like mystical power power being slightly up strange please keep the powers at a minimal i think it does help how the characters can approach situations you know carl maybe zaps Nicole maybe shoots and then even has her shield later on um and her emps and explosives which was also seen later even her wolf is many agile and strong with the quill sheeted as well so it's just enough variety as well but yeah i wish the service men other good more abilities as well they have in theory with <laughs> sorry this is in my head probably in the character guide but for now i just see them with pistols um so uh, yeah i think that's all to say let's go all right so when i've mentioned about pods for link is another instance uh there is shading parts to water in some instances and i wish when i did that more and also by the way this isn't uh, this is Pod's tail, not a gap. I thought it was a gap because these two, the tail and the land, is different, similar colours, but apologies, no, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it's a tail, so yeah. Um, so yeah, if, um, you know, yeah, it's, it was said that the Tengus did provide Pod tips on how to use the Trident, and you know, you can see how the knowledge has helped with the flooding earlier, and it's helped get them up from this cone as well. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and also I think uh, Pod can either be bigger or then should be smaller, unless it's some kind of. Oh geez, that's that my phone going off. Um, so yeah, character size difference, that could have been better. Um, but yeah, I think uh, both the scene and the description is kind of nice. Um, the Anders go back on his feet thanks to a star which is set up, with the Tengus already having one, um, which you'll spot up by looking at it. That is set up and pay off, a very important story element, because without doing so, you have convenience. <laughs> definitely. It's something I can be used at minimal, but too much. But it's definitely a crumbling story. Um, uh, but yeah, and you also have a, a moment later with Dion and the part of that, you know, they both um, are like singular beings of their own kind and they can redefine the entire race as well. You know, Dion's a saving Mitch Bot and Pod can be a morpho that's not as animalistic. So yeah, I definitely, yeah, I think that's why, yeah, I think that's why Pod's not only one of my favourite characters, but I think from an objective writing standpoint, he does seem to be one of the stronger ones, quite interesting as well. And that's also why Rock is my favourite as well, because the bits with Pod, the ideas that came up for him, yeah, I do find that quite interesting. Um, I think that's it, yeah, and you'll see what they do as well. They have their own little role in the story, and also just keep noticing um, a bit more colouring with Pod there that could have been done. Um, anyway, let's uh, get going. Okay, uh, missing colouring for this window here, sorry, great start. Uh, but yeah, another nice moment. So Kyle is, no, damn it, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, Zami is defending his former bully from the real enemies who are actively trying to cause destruction. Have you know probably had their own ego going ahead of them, and you know um, you know much worse compared to what the bully used to do to Zami. It shows off his power. It's not making him egotistical. Yeah, I just I think it's just yeah one of the one of the better pages in book two I reckon. Um, um yeah, so yeah, I'll just say it was just a nice moment. <laughs> yeah, probably would not have been nice to see more the bully more, but even then I think they've made up, and that's all that needs to be done. Um, so uh, something that had been fixed is a piece of a chain which has failed to be coloured um, in these the, in these slightly outdated images, but uh, this is definitely fixed um, in both the updated videos and Wix pages as well. But yeah, this definitely shows the planets have been taken over. Um, uh, so yeah, I think this is a Hill Wolf's planet. That's a past monster's planet. Uh, the others, uh, this one could be the land of the seaweed people, which you do get a hint of later on, especially if it's mainly made out of water, and they and they have Earth as well. Uh, yeah, even the first ever shot in the story was going to be a shot of Earth and an aircraft going through, but you know, the, that first page of the Legion on Earth is already a much better way to go into the story compared to a shot of Earth. And you can also see Dan as well, he's flying across space, breaking all these chains. That seems to be his role in the entire scheme, you know, which is definitely nice as well. You know, it just shows that his owner is about to be done, which is going to be another massive job design for as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think another interesting part is that, well, the first two books, they have like massive leaps of the legion and then as a small smaller spoiler the end of book three and book four and then a minor lace sour manner which makes book five more interesting because you're like oh you know will be after be a loss or will they actually succeed and they do uh yeah so it's quite fitting with like normal story structure as well you know like the five act structure theory almost um 
they are so these trains were ever so hard to draw, you know, trying to link them. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go. Alright, so yeah, one of my favourite plot moments in book two is flooding the planet. You know, the Tengus lived in a water world and, um, you yeah, and all of this concrete is being rid of by uh, Pod. And also, by the way, uh, not only is this Bo's owner evacuating the planet on his castle and and it could be like, you know, why is he leaving the goons behind? Uh, maybe that's due to timing, maybe they failed to get on, but they are a race on the road. They are starting to, you know, lose the city battle, which Bo's owner probably don't, doesn't like. You know, he probably knew that Legion managed to beat them. And um, and as you can see later, or as said by writing, um, some are you know being let off to be, um, you know, beings of free will. Um, uh, no, sorry, you know, just they want more of their own free will. You know, uh, the book has said, I think it said, I don't know how to read. I don't want to spend too long on some pages. But yeah, they just they decided to be a race of their own. And there was even going to be a scene in book three where Dion goes to see, you know, how these were hanging, you know, to be a more peaceful race. Um, but yeah, it's not as that sounds, it's, it was irrelevant, but you can interpret that, you know, these, you know, the rest of them are good, you could say. And even Dion or Pod, and almost Legion as well, you know, they probably would uh, see that, you know, some of these only goons are good now, and they're going to leave the conflict. Uh, which is nice, you know, definitely a nice ending for an army, because instead of every army being entirely gone, you know, um, uh, yeah, so if you're having a run through, um, Zyneville's goons, all of them had to go, um, all of the niche bots had to go. Or the uh, when Silver Rock in book three he made his own version of the Bozo Nagoons, they all had to go. The more fills, you know, they're fine and and some of these are fine. So yeah, nice to vary that part of the story, you know, considering nearly all the villains have their own armies. And here they're flying serpents as well. Could have been clearer, but you know, that, that's definitely the way out of the planet. And I think even that shows how they space travel and how Ozona gets out of space as well. I do quite like the look of the castle by the way. Um yeah, sorry, I just forgot what he's looked like, especially when it's tiny. Uh, so yeah, the planet's definitely flooded, uh, more so compared to that one area, and you actually see the entire lot. I think it could have been more detailed and looks more like a flood, but even then, you can still tell it's more water. Hello, so um, third day recording, so I don't remember what I last spoke about other than needing to talk about this page, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, if looking at this um, battle scene, wait if I get my laser up, there we go. Uh, yeah, I think the water could have done with being more layered because it's obviously similar to the sky in the background. <clears throat> yeah, the trunks uh, coming off that could have probably looked a bit better as well, but even then I still, yeah, I still kind of like that, you know, it just probably shows how rough the battle's been, or, you know, no, it could have been, like, uh, attempts where Pod's trying to get inside. Or, uh, yeah, um, there, there would have been more to the, to this fight in the... Um, you know, when it came to 50 pages at first, um, so the idea was that the Legion and even the servicemen all fly to the, the castle, and so with that being done, you could have seen that could be the aircraft firing at the castle, but even then, as you can see, um, his owner is very good at um, getting projectiles that way. But yeah, some nice details, so um, his owner is, if I just could show how much he's, you know, three things at once, so he's definitely powerful, you know, trying to get hold of <clears throat> uh, Zami, to which um, he seems to be uh, learning to absorb, yeah, that could have been a bit more set up because, um, you know, as shown earlier, he's tried to update his technology, and I think that's a bit I could have added in as well, which I'll add to the novels as well. But it was, I don't think it was added at first because it would have added too much detail for the books, you know, for books as small as these. Um, so yeah, like as well as trying to up the ante with his lightning powers, um, you know, various technology, it, it was also absorbing, um, base technology as well, and so yeah, like I said, it could have helped, you know, learning to <clears throat> resist um, other power, especially if this is the most powerful lightning gun in the story, you know, it's coming from one of the elements which Ozone has. And um, uh, yeah, and then you have Nicole going down, you have she water at him, and then Hellwolf's going to go for a sneak attack, which um, is either successful or not, quite an interesting cliffhanger, but yeah, um, with the following um, page, it doesn't really show Ozone again. But the idea is that because as he gets worn out after fights, you know, especially the one with Dion earlier. <clears throat> um, so yeah, there was this, um, so the fight would have ended as, you know, Zona loses his power, it gets sicked off him. And then the Legion, you know, um, you know go, still going hard on him. But then he eventually dies on his own from being worn out, almost as if the element has been keeping him up, you know, despite his old age, which um, is an interesting idea. And also it's an interesting way to end the villain as well, because you want to end... You know, the villains in different ways. So, so far we got his owner, he gets torn about the torn apart by vegetation, by live vegetation from the life element. And then later on in the story, you know, Zyvor's just spoilers, uh, Zyvor's killed by all elements at once. Uh, Nicodor, 
it's a similar to Arizona, you know, not loyal, but if anything, that's just more so I'll get to beat him up badly, and then <clears throat> and Toyota explodes, and Slivrock simply dies in the back in the fight, and, you know, like a two one kind of situation. Uh, but yeah, I had a, on the net, I do like the inside of his castle as well, you know, we could have seen more of it, probably would have in, um, yeah, you know, in deleted pages, because there's one where Ozone has like the map of all the planets, that was definitely an idea before that was cut. Um, but yeah, on the net, yeah, let's get going. Alright, so yeah, as for those who have a sharp eye, yeah, these, these crowds are duplicated and they are reused in other times as well. Uh, probably could have done with not only more people, but probably make the crowd better, but um, you know, sometimes when it comes to like, you know, after a battle, Twitch, yeah, it does not like a battle's happened, does it? <laughs> and he's like rubble and fire and stuff. Yeah, definitely another improvement to the list. Um, but yeah, I think this is like, well, over the size of the crowd, I think could be accepted, just depends who's trying to get out and stuff. You know, you probably could imagine servicemen trying to get people out of the rubble. And, and also, yeah, as shown in the other page, Bod is reunited with the others. And, you know, as, um, because if you remember, Retron has released um, you know, personal information about the Legion on top of... Actually, no, it was Redron who released the footage which made the Legion worse. But and I think that's what the book says for now. But there was other ideas I had where Retron was to send even more. You know, like, you know, like the personal background of these four even, because, you know, Darvik could have done some wrongdoings. And, you know, the Cole especially has, you know, ended up in young offenders. Uh, so, yeah, and, you know, it's the first interaction with the public, which is <clears throat> a big step and also represents the end of the story and how the Legion do become almost like celebrity figures. And this also links with a, another deleted scene where the president does, you know, tell off Retron. I think that's said on the following page, actually. Uh, yeah, the president, he does give Retron another chance, but he is born to that, you know, if trying to reveal that information in order to bring himself up and bring himself down. Yeah, the president and all like would <clears throat> be having that. And thankfully that's not out in the open. But yeah, that could have brought up an interesting discussion, actually. But you can, yeah, this is Mike saying to Retron, hey, you know, the president would want to talk to you. That's definitely, like, of the point here, but, you know, that's an idea of mine that's that should be better executed. And also not to mention, I think Pod's meant to be a bit bigger as well. <clears throat> uh, right, let's go. Okay, so this way we get more of an idea of Hell's World, to which, despite probably wanting to add a bit more to it, you know, like Snow maybe, because even the the lore guide, or the, you know, the, like the guide to the whole story, as that's been developed, it said that it does have snow, but you could have inferred, inferred that in uh, you know, like in other areas of the planet, but even then it's, you know, it's nice graphs and that's meant to be a cliff, it just looks part of it. Um, yeah, I think that could have been done better, but even then, you know, nice lake, nice mountains, the tech sadly covers these in Northern Lights, you know, these are the, the fly what this race is into, because these Northern Lights, they embody the life force with the animal spirits and that's how, how often other people have their powers. And you can even see that they're dressed, um, dressed in a certain way as well. And, um, yeah, it's an old, uh, one here, similar clothing, you can see a whole heap here, but even then I think um, for a full-bodied crowd could have been better than just like a third of the head. And then you also have, um, you know, Carly's help to drop her off, and this represents um, part of at the end of the story. And um, when it comes to book two, three, and arguably four, there are characters which are introduced and then uh, they have like a temporary break, so yeah, it's a spoiler, we won't be seeing her until book five where everyone starts to come together, but uh, regardless, um, you know, she's been avoiding her race all this time and you know now his own is gone she's able to get some forgiveness and she does you know it kind of links with how you know Carl and the bully forgive each other and how Nicole um, you know would be more apologetic with the Legion earlier and and also saying oh you know I did have this um, rough history so it's about being open as well which you know, I think is um, a really nice touch quite more of a varied theme compared to book one as well um, so uh, yeah I think that's all I have to say let's um, go on to the final page I say one more thing about the previous page is that um, it would add more to Nicole's idea of wanting more Legion members because if you have been argued by Nicole, he's either going to be temporary or unlikely to come about, then yeah, you will definitely need more members. And that just lead to some interesting ideas, which we'll get to in the next um, video. <clears throat> but uh, when I was mentioned earlier about how much book two had to shrink, well, this shows how much had to shrink. But even if this looks a little bit squashed, um, it's, I, th I think it's nice, you know, just goes to show what the effects of the lead and success. So the words will be spread around. Um, they'll be inspiring other races to fight back. You know, the tankers seem to be happier. Uh, I think they should have been underwater unless the cabins are still around, despite the planet being water-like, as they would like to have. Um, but even then, you can imagine that. And yeah, as mentioned, um, Dion satellites, which it has been 
button all over the galaxy for communication. You know, it's a bit of a uproar against Iron Four here. And also, not to mention, this will be the last we see the tech because there have been ideas of seeing them again, but um, yeah, I fear I don't know what's going to happen. So unfortunate. Uh, but you know, these that uh, the nice story told. And not to mention, this part has definitely been fixed. Um, you know, colouring of the star here. You can only see an outline, but it's definitely been sorted. If you're wondering, it's just Dion has offered another star for them when their star was used to help Dion earlier. And then you also have set up for the following book, uh, Pasmos and Amy Keith. Um, you know, they would have, you know, with one of their, you know, Pasmos's planet was chained up by <clears throat> Ozona, and so with them being free, they could be like, hey, you know, let's roam or whatever. And I think their reason for coming along later, so I think I'm just going to say now before I forget. Um, I think this is what this book has sadly missed out. Um, oh, wait, no, it is explained, sorry. So uh, while it is uh, kind of retextualised later on, the initial the plan of theirs is to go and see the Legion because of another threat. And yeah, I think to be honest, it's uh, the third book does have the most out of nowhere threats, just simply another sign for I like, but it could say it's a, a newer one and has its own reasons. So yeah, I guess um, that explains that part. Um, and yeah, it is the idea as well. He's like, hey, you know, let's get the help with the Legion. They'll probably know what to do. And then the person will see you just simply here for the fun of fighting. And you know, you could probably see that with you no know, really liking a sword, just not, you know, not caring. And how you should be careful with it. And I said before we get onto this slide, so yeah, these guys are made up back in BF5, I think. So yeah, these are seaweed characters with carried over. Even this guy, the race are called Atars, but he used to be called Atar. He was like what well, used to be a main character but not only was pod a better fit for like a tank character especially with uh more interesting characters are designed but you know he was just a tight you know, he was a simple sort of dude new average everyday royal drama there's some interesting ideas they had like a dynamic with his dad with to which um it could be carried through um like future material you know have a go with that idea he even used to have a servant uh, which you know, comes from design for as well but yeah as you can tell this was definitely scrapped and what it's just status quo now with these books, just seem too far right. And if you're wondering about that, um, yeah, that's the communication spell which has been mentioned earlier this video, but definitely seen later in book four. And so the idea is is that uh, he's trying to contact various members, and you know they all seem to be going. Hence why the uproar will be a much bigger dent to his army compared to what happened at the end of book one. Um, so yeah, that does take it to the end of this video. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Book you know all these videos are all out of the bat at once. So. Uh, yeah, have a good day.